What family secret was finally spilled in your family? That my parents had to get married. They always told us they got married in 1961. But it was 1962. Three months before my sister was born. What's amusing is that my father was an accountant who was insanely fast with math. Whenever he was asked how many years they'd been married, he'd be off by one. My mother would correct him through clenched teeth, and then my father would nod and agree. I was always told by an older relative of mine that the first child in a marriage for some reason always took less than 9 months. I always found it amusing to think about that. My great grandmother wasn't actually Mexican, but rather was adopted by a Mexican family from a Chinese family who was being kicked out of Mexico when railroad construction was over. She always had more typically Asian features, but only spoke Spanish, and it was never really questioned. 23 and me is a heck of a thing. When my paternal grandfather died the federal government reached out to do a state funeral. He'd been career army and a colonel. So we didn't question it. Then the funeral came, and they went all out. Huge procession. People showing up who are really big names. Like heads of debts. Senators. Retired senators. People from the CIA and state debt. It was nuts, and we were all super confused. Turns out he was a key dude in the OC during WWII, and when the OC splintered into the CIA and Secret Service, he went the Secret Service route. He wasn't on White House detail, but instead worked in a covered office that dealt with counterfeiting and currency. He went blind when I was a toddler and retired from the army, for whatever reason. He told no one about all his covered work with the OC and Secret Service and the only person who knew my grandmother was sworn to secrecy and never told anyone. My father grew up thinking he was just a colonel working on base. Only after his death were we given all sorts of cool shit like publications by him, lectures given by him, and all kinds of things from various things he did and was known for. All I knew him as was a blind old man who was perpetually smoking, drinking and being a crotchety bastard. Turns out he was a bad methodiker and all but none of us knew. My mother is kid 7 of 10. My aunt kid 4 who was born in 1945 did her DNA and found out that she has a different father from everyone else. She was devastated. There was always rumor that there was an affair but nobody talked about it. She has so many questions but nobody's alive to answer her. In the 1970s a dead girl was found on my grandpa's property. Everyone including the local police just assumed she was in with a bad crowd and murdered by drug dealers. In the 90s, some of his grandkids came forward about all the molestation. After that, people started to realize grandpa probably killed that girl. My grandparents are first cousins. An uncle on the same side of the family is in prison for the assassination of a presidential candidate family still says he was framed and is innocent. I see a lot of stories about people finding out that who they thought was their parents weren't the people raising them, and this one is a little bit different. My dad always thought his father who raised him wasn't his bio dad and the father thought the same. He was treated terribly by his father because the father was told he couldn't have children and my father was born prematurely but at a healthy weight. So, everyone assumed my grandmother had an affair and got pregnant with my dad. It was to the point that after my grandmother died, my grandfather failed to even mention to his new wife that he had a son and grandchild me. Years later, my dad gets an ancestry DNA test for him and me. He find out that his dad was actually his biodad. It was shocking and sad. When she was growing up, my grandmother was told by her older siblings that she had a different father than them. They believed their mother was having an affair with a neighbor and that was my grandmother's B.O. father. My mom and I both took DNA tests and it matched us both with cousins from my grandmother's older siblings and with relatives from their B.O. dad's family. Great grandma may have indeed been having an affair, but that didn't mean my grandmother was a product of that affair. Sadly, even after explaining all of this to her, my grandmother still refuses to believe that her parents were the same as her older siblings. Found out my grandma had a baby as a teenager and was forced to give him up for adoption by my great grandparents. 40 years later he found us. Same thing happened to my mom. I'm 33 now. Older half-brother is roughly 35. I hold hope that I'll meet him one day. 
this is kind of messed up. But my parents told me my mom had a bad back because I pushed on her spine during birth. This was what I thought all my childhood. I think I was in my teens when my older brother told me my dad pushed my mom during an argument and she fell and had to have surgery. I thought I ruined my mom's back my entire childhood and those sobs. Let me believe it. My father's brother killed four girls when he was in high school. My father was the one who found out and told the police. My cousin is actually my sister. Apparently my mom got pregnant really young and her much older sister adopted my sister and raised her as her own. It was actually an amazing moment when we found out. My cousin sister and the sister I was raised with and I are really really close. Just happened last year. We're all old now I'm 50 and my cousin sister is 58. So it's just a really neat thing that makes us all happy. When I was 5 years old 1988. Santa Claus left a Nintendo on our front porch. It was wrapped in newspaper. And my parents had no idea who gifted it to us. My dad. Particularly. Tried to figure it out. He was always suspicious that it had been a family friend. It was by far the best gift of the year. And we played it all the time throughout our childhood. My dad died in 2004. Last Christmas. My mom explained that she was the one who had bought it and surreptitiously placed it on the porch. My dad really liked to be in control of things and had forbidden the purchase. She knew better. She didn't tell a soul for 30 years. Thanks mom. My de facto uncle he and my aunt never married but have been together since well before I was born. With a few hiccups has a child with another woman. It became common knowledge when the girl was 6 and was starting to understand the situation. At first it was a bit scandalous, but she's been welcomed with open arms by my entire family, including her half-siblings maternal grandparents. She's treated the same as all the other kids her age. Her half-sister my cousin has a daughter the same age and they're best friends. Go to the same high school. Totally inseparable. Technically aunt and niece haha. She comes to all our family events and she's an awesome kid. We're all stoked to have her in our family. After my mom died I found out the real story behind my parents marriage. She came to my father's country to visit some of her relatives. Met my father and after just one week she asked him to marry her so she could stay in the country. My father accepted because he had no one else and his parents were pressing him to get married already. But the highlight of the story is that over some time, the two of them fell in love with each other. Their love only grew over the time and they were really happy together. My mother spent her last days very ill, and she would accept only my father by her bedside. He swears to this day that she was an angel sent from God to take care of him. I'm shocked that they got married just like that, out of the blue, and ended up loving each other so 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 deeply. I can only hope to have as good and loving marriage as they had. Edit I had no idea my parents little secret would touch so many people. Thank you all. It means a lot. You made it worth scrolling through all these depressing stories. Thanks for sharing. My uncles are infamous criminals who killed multiple people. I thought they bred dogs. Edit thanks for the awards. The only good thing that ever came from this. They may have also bred dogs. About a month ago, my mother-in-law's 88-year-old sister revealed on her deathbed that her husband's best friend was actually the father of all four of her children. Her husband was an abusive grade-A jerk by all accounts. While everyone was shocked, no one was saddened by this news. We found out after my grandfather died that none of his seven children with my grandmother were his, and that they all likely had different fathers. My uncle served in Vietnam. While over there his troop found a baby that had been orphaned or abandoned. They aren't sure. My uncle was shipping back to Australia soon and wanted to adopt him. But my aunt said no they'd only been married about 4 months when he was drafted. So while I don't agree with my aunt's actions and generally don't like her as a person. I can understand why she said no. My uncle's troop found a family to raise the baby. And that's the story the whole family knows. The secret is that my uncle and some other guys from his troop stayed in contact with the family and the kid. 
sending them money every month to help raise him and then to help him go to university and eventually helped him and his adoptive family moved to Australia in the last 90s. My aunt and the rest of my family had no idea all this time. It only came out when my aunt and uncle divorced in 2017 and she had a forensic accountant go through their bank records. She worked at a bank for like 40 years and always noticed the money missing. But his reasons were always justified. Since we all know now, my uncle has introduced some of us to the guy and his family. They're all really lovely people. Edit to clarify as to why my aunt is a bad person in this instance. I was half asleep when I posted this and realized I left out a pretty important detail to explain why I don't like my aunt for this facipum. To preface, I'm chilled free and if my husband was in this situation, I'd say no as well. It's not the fact she said no to adopting the kid that makes me dislike her for this. It's her reason. Aunt is very racist against Asian people. Doesn't matter what part of Asia. She hates them. She's the kind of person who will yell go back to your own country at random strangers who even vaguely look like they may have Asian ancestry. She also cut contact with my cousin, her daughter, because my cousin's husband is half Japanese, she said, in front of my family with no shame, that if the kid hadn't been Asian, she would have said yes to adopting him. Nanny I had when I was younger was actually my dad's attempted sister wife. She found out how batched he was and dipped. My great grandfather didn't die of cancer. He died from complications after being shot when one of his businesses was being robbed. Maybe. He also spent a lot of time in Atlantic City. He also had a lot of partners in the Teamsters and other unions in coal country. Also, everyone called him Smiling Tony, but his name wasn't Tony. He died in the 60s, long before my time. But when my great grandmother died 20 years ago, a very old guy showed up to the funeral in a white suit and all of the oldest people in my family kisses his hand. When I asked, no one knew who he was. My grandfather moved his family away from central PA in the late 60s and disconnected from all of this but, there it is. When I was 28, I found out that my dad was not my biological father. The news came out via the following my dad was battling depression and was suicidal. So I had just flown home to try to take care of him and rescue him from my mom's wrath. My mom had verbally and emotionally abused him during their entire relationship. He loved her so much and he tolerated it. Well, during a solemn walk w my dad, as I tried to help him out, he confided that he's not my biological dad, and he went on to tell me he knew this all along, but my mom lied to him, and tried to convince him, that he was my biological father. He knew he wasn't, but he wanted to play the role. When I was 10 years old, my mom finally confessed this to him, and he was worried that upon hearing the news, officially, he'd somehow let this affect his relationship with me. So, when I was 28 years old, during this walk w my dad, as he pours out this story to me, he frames it by telling me that his two most proud items in his life are one how I turned out his raising me to that he had completely forgot about the news my mom told him earlier in that day when I was 10 about him not being my biological father and that it was only upon tucking me in at night when I was 10 that it briefly crossed his mind. It was at that point that he knew nothing would ever come between us and our father-son relationship would be as awesome as ever. He also confided that my mom did hard drugs while pregnant with me and this broke his heart to witness first and they were very poor. My dad grew up in a foster home without parents. My mom grew up w6 siblings and ill-equipped parents. She dropped out of 9th grade. Whereas all of her other siblings dropped out earlier many of them are barely literate. I'm now mid 30s. And tragically, my dad committed suicide mid March 2020. Right as covered was hitting. I was out of the country at the time, but immediately flew 30 hours 30 minute layover and made it in time for his funeral. I do everything in his honor. Update. Wow. This thread blew up overnight. My most popular comment by two orders of magnitude. And it's about my sorrow. I'm just glad so many of you read about how amazing my dad was. And I truly appreciate the outpour of kind, thoughtful words and wishes. It warms my heart. I could go on and on with countless examples about how amazing he was. After graduating from the orphanage at age 18, 
he moved up to Atlanta by himself, and taught himself woodworking. He was incredible, and would build fine furniture pieces for renowned interior decorators. And his items would be in magazines all the time. He was a starving artist we always struggled to get by, yet, I felt like a spoiled kid on my street, as I had life easier than everyone else the other kids on my street, lived in trailer homes, and had very chaotic households, and it was clear, that both of my parents loved me immensely, and I felt very well, provided for and supported, I was very lucky to have him in my life, I still think about him daily, and I'm trying to improve emotionally, I appreciate everyone sharing your own similar stories, and it provides a sense of camaraderie. Hearing the shared pain and empathy, and seeing that this resonated with so many people, it motivates me to finally write a short stories book that would include snippets from my relationship with him. For those interested in reading more about him, EXERPT from my eulogy to him, which I wrote when flying to his funeral, multiply to his hard work. For my entire upbringing, he worked every single day in his shop. For long hours didn't even take a day off for Christmas or his birthday. As a kid, I witnessed his work ethic and it forever left an impression on me. Importantly, he didn't appear as if he was working for someone else he was working for himself. He found what he loved woodworking and he completely immersed himself into and dedicated his life to making perfectly crafted items because he wanted to. He had passion, a pursuit of perfection and an unlimited tank of dedication to fuel it. He didn't just make items. He didn't just work. He made masterpieces. When I was 18, and left home to go to college, I aspired to be like my dad. He set the example. I was trying to make something of myself, and to really give it my all just like he did. His work ethic was ingrained in me. I would get 4, 5 hours of sleep many nights every week. For years. It was hard. But I always thought about how much harder my dad worked. I would recall memories of him working in his shop late at night I'd hear the saw spinning the compressor running memories of huge sawdust piles under his table saw. He did so much to provide for our family. He always provided. I remember being a kid. Hanging out with him in his shop. Admiring his dedication to the craft and strive for perfection. So, when I was 18. Starting college. I was trying to make him proud. And I was also trying to do everything I could, so that I'd have the opportunity, to do anything I want in this world. Not just for myself, but on behalf of my dad. A part of me felt that whatever opportunity I gained, whatever, success I had, it was in hopes, that he too would somehow benefit. That he could vicariously get what he deserved. He deserved the world, and I've just been trying to channel his hard work, and do my part, anything I've accomplished. It's because of my dad. Multiply 3 his creative problem solving abilities. Not only did my dad work relentlessly hard, but he masterfully found creative solutions to everything. He truly dedicated his life to solving problems and designing furniture for others. There is no physical item he could not figure out. His ability to do so was way beyond anything I've ever witnessed. None of my colleagues at MIT, Harvard, Brown, or whatever fancy place I've worked at could remotely come close to having my dad's unique ability to creatively make things work. Whatever the problem, my dad could find a solution. When he was 12, he was excited once he learned that you could repair some radios just by replacing the diodes. When I was a kid, he made me an incredible treehouse with its own electricity line. When I was a teenager, there was a large ice storm in Georgia that caused half a million homes to lose power for up to a week. Our house included. My dad had an old portable black and white TV. He grabbed his car battery and rigged it up so that we could watch TV for days. Despite not having power, his vehicles over the years had so many contraptions and workarounds. They were often like modern day Flintstones cars. This was how he did things his entire life. Multiply 5 his strength and character. His perseverance was unmatched. He handled so much adversity over the years. Especially the past 10 years, when he was in so much pain. He was the strongest person I've ever met. Hands down. In recent years, he experienced and recovered from Stevens Johnson syndrome. A rare, horrific, deadly skin disorder that covers the entire body. He was resilient beyond belief. 
and he endured so many personal obstacles that were thrown his way. His strength wasn't just in his ability to endure, but in his bravery. I have many stories from my childhood where he stepped us to save the day in crisis. He was fearless. Not only was he courageous in his character, but he was also physically strong as an ox. It was uncanny. In his 60s, he could often lift more than I could in my 30s. Despite my being really into weightlifting. But I'll spare you the fun. Humbling details. Multiply 6 vulnerability and gentleness. Once I became an adult, he was strong enough to admit to me tough moments in his life. He was willing to confide in me painful times that he endured. He was willing to call on me for help. And to tell me when he felt he wasn't strong enough. We all feel this way at times. He was vulnerable to cry. He showed me that one's willingness to show vulnerability is in fact a product of strength and bravery. Multiply 11 closing. As I close, I want to mention one of my favorite artists, Alanis Morissette, who has a stanza that challenges us by asking how about remembering your divinity? How about unabashedly bawling your eyes out? How about not equating death with stopping? To this effect, I know that my dad will continue to inspire me and influence me for the rest of my life. Without question, I'm who I'm because of him. I've always aspired to uphold the principles and he stood for. And I hope that others see in me his virtues and pieces of his personality. I want to continue his legacy. Thus, he hasn't stopped. Further, I challenge all of you to do the same and never equate death with stopping. That is, we can do better than just remembering someone. We can do better than just remembering my dad. We can continue to learn from what he's taught us. The element I've mentioned today. One when you find something you love. Whether it's work or a hobby. Put everything you have into it to be willing to think creatively to solve problems three take the time to enjoy the so-called minutiae in life the alleged trivial details make it significant four be willing to play and be silly don't take yourself too seriously five be brave be strong be so strong that you're willing to be vulnerable six be a teacher and be a lifelong student 7. Mean everything you say and speak earnestly. 8. Connect with others form a community and be there for others. We could all benefit from the help of others. So be unafraid to rely on others for support. I would do anything to have my dad with us here today in his own words. Which he often told me it's not what happens to you but how you handle it. So again I urge you all to handle this tragedy by staying strong. Connecting with community and the support of others and continuing to learn from my dad. Thank you all for being here. It means the world to me and I know it means the world to my dad. I was 35 when my mother finally admitted to me that she'd been lying about who my birth father was. She waited until after I'd reached out to his other children and we all thought we were siblings. He later confirmed I wasn't his. She refused to tell me who my biological father really was. My great great grandfather was exiled and banned from Missouri for being a sheep thief. I read an amusing anecdote here on Reddit a few days ago. In Europe I want to say either Ireland or Wales. Stealing a sheep was a capital crime. But shagging a sheep was just met with a lot of embarrassment. So if a sheep thief was caught out in the fields with no good explanation of what he was doing out there, it behoved him to pretend that he was a degenerate pervert rather than a thief. And that is why how the stereotype and jokes about sex with sheep came about. The penalty for livestock theft was to have your hand removed. The penalty for bestiality was to have a finger removed. Sheep thieves would claim buggery to lose only a finger instead of the wrist. We went to my grandmother's for Christmas dinner like we did every year and my uncle drank too much and kind of hinted that he had an affair with my mother. A couple of months and two DNA tests later we found out my sister is actually his daughter. My dad never spoke to his brother again. And of course, my parents got divorced. And I needed a lot of therapy. And chocolate. Gosh we are trash. <laughs>